This is the second video on using MATLAB to solve ODEs and here the focus is going to be, as you can see, on higher order ODEs. The previous video then focused on solving forced first order ODEs and showed the simple use of MATLAB for solving these and now we're going to focus on higher order ones. We will also briefly remind you how to get numerical solutions from the analytic solutions that we first derive. An example then, here's a second order ODE. You can see it written here as f equals a d2x dt squared plus b dx dt plus cx and we've given a couple of initial conditions. So the question is how do you enter this into MATLAB and solve for x of t? Well the basic command we're going to use is called dsolve.m which is a, a MATLAB file that's provided and this video will just show the basics if you really want to know more then go and use the help function. It's implicit that if you can solve for a differential equation which here you see we've written as a function x that if you really needed a different variable name w, z, y and so on then you'd be quite able to do it but we'll do two examples here just to make it obvious how you can do that. First example then, so you can see our differential equation at the top 4 equals 2 d2x dt squared plus 5 dx dt plus 3x and again we've got a couple of initial conditions. Now the first thing you've got to do is define any unknowns as symbolic variables. Now the unknowns that we've got here are going to be the second derivative, the first derivative and x. So we define a symbolic variable x brackets t and you'll notice here the particular notation where you use x brackets t and that also defines the independent variable as t. We then define dx as diff x which gives us dx dt and d2x as diff dx and that gives us d2x dt squared. So we've now got symbolic variables for each of the terms in our equation. And then all you do is plug all of them together, as you can see here. So if you look at the bit in the green circle, which I should use red, which we mark this here, you'll see that this is identical to this equation up here. You'll see the coefficients have just been taken down direct. So 2 times d2x is equivalent to 2 d2x dt squared. 5 times dx is equivalent to 5 dx dt and 3x is 3x. And the other thing you need to notice is this use of the double equals sign wherever you're setting an identity. So that's the syntax you use for entering your equation and your initial conditions which you can see on the right. And if you put this into MATLAB then your solution will come out here. Example 2, and this is just to demonstrate that you can use any variable names you like. So here I've written the differential equation as 1 equals d2y dt squared plus 15 dy dt plus 14y and again a few initial conditions on the right hand side. So again we define our symbolic variables which here are going to be y, dy dt and d2y dt squared using the MATLAB notation sims yt dy equals diff y and d2y equals diff dy. And then we simply use the dsolve statement exactly the same as on the previous slide which you can see here where we simply enter the expression using this MATLAB syntax. So I write d2y plus 15 times dy plus 14 times y equals equals 1. Now the other subtlety we've put in here just just for completeness is you'll notice that I've set one of the initial conditions not to be based at time 0 and I've shown that in the bottom command as well. Example 3. This example is to show that the input function doesn't need to be 1. So here you'll notice we've put sine t equals d2y dt squared plus 5 dy dt plus 8y. So this is a bit like a frequency response. So again you start by defining all your symbolic variables y, dy and d2y and then as before you just plug the equation straight in. So if you look here you'll see the equation above has just been plugged into the dsolve command 
in exactly the form that it comes. And this will now throw out a solution for y, which in this particular case will include the frequency response for a frequency of 1 radian per second. And again you'll notice, just to show that it makes no difference, I vary the initial conditions here not to be 0. Example 4. So this is to demonstrate how would you go to even higher order differential equations. So here we're doing fourth order and hopefully once we've done a fourth order you'll see the extension to even higher order is self-evident. You should also notice that now we need four initial conditions if we want to get the complete solution. So again we start by defining all our symbolic variables. So here we've got sims xt and then they need dx for dx dt, d2x for d2x dt squared, d3x for d23 dt cubed and d4x for... and uh, I've noticed a typo at the stop, I do apologise, that th should be a 3 and that should be a 3. So now we just plug these equations in and you'll see exactly as before we just plug the equation straight into the d solve statement along with at the bottom as you can see here our four initial conditions. Now five this example here is just to show that you don't have to do initial conditions which are in terms of the derivative first derivative second derivative and so on if you want to you can put any four independent initial conditions. So here you'll see all my initial conditions are done in terms of x. I've got x of 0 equals 0, x of 1 equals 0, x of 2 equals 0, x of 3 equals 1. And anybody who's solved these on pen and paper will realise that this is quite normal. So again, we've got our standard statements. We define our symbolic variables and then we just plug everything in to desolve at the bottom in the standard way. What about plotting? So I'm going to do this very briefly because it was covered in the previous video and we simply use subs in order to evaluate our solutions at specified times t. So I define the times that I want here. I'm using tt for time and here I'm doing it um, between 0 and 6 seconds. I then substitute those values of time into my expression x of t and that will give me the numerical values and once I've got the numerical values of x I can plot time against x. And a reminder here that I've deliberately used tt for time instead of t so that MATLAB doesn't get confused between the symbolic variable t and the numerical values for time. So some MATLAB demonstrations then just to show that this is all straightforward. So I've got a few simple MATLAB windows and we will show you the MATLAB code in action. So the top example here is the first example and you can see line 2 I'm doing my sims xt, line 3 dx equals df, diff x, line 4 d2x equals diff dx and then line 5 was the line we had in the slide. So if I run this overall section and what do you see? MATLAB throws you out the solution x of t equals 8 e to the minus 3t over 2 all over 3 minus 4 e to the minus t plus 4 over 3. Now if you want to plot it you'll see again using the lines we had before you've got this lin space to define some time vectors then I substitute using subs xt comma tt to get the numerical values of x and then I just on line 12 plot times again to x. So if I run this section and you'll see the plot appears. So if we now look at 5, so this was the second example we looked at, you'll see we've got sims yt, dy equals diff y, d2y equals diff dy and there's exactly the equation we'd written down in the notes. Run that and here you can see MATLAB has thrown out the solution. This one's a bit longer, um, covering a bit more of the page but it's thrown out the solution for you. If we now go to 6, this one um, was to show if you look here at line 5 that you can have non-simple input functions. So here I'm using sine t. So again if I run this section 
And the problem you've got here is if you had to do this on pen and paper, it would take you a while because if you look at the solution that MATLAB's thrown out, can you see how complicated this is? Not very nice. I don't think I'd want to do that on pen and paper. And yes, you can simplify it a bit because it's left things like 7 to the power half and so on. But the key thing is MATLAB's just done it for you. And if you had to do that on pen and paper, it would probably take you half an hour. Finally, we get the fourth example, which is fourth order. So we look at this top section. You'll see we've got the sims x, dx equals diff x, d2x equals diff dx, d3x equals diff d d2x and so on all the way to diff 4 and then lines 5 and 6 we've got the use of the dsolve command so again if I put a line space here just so we can be clear what's going on and then run this section and you can see here's the solution and you can see it solved it for you straight away and then the final section down here was just to illustrate your initial conditions can be any four independent conditions because this is fourth order so I run this section and you will see you get a slightly different answer because you've expressed your initial conditions in a different way again you can see that's quite a long answer but there's lots of numbers in here which for example here numbers which you could simplify and calculate okay So, in summary, we've demonstrated the DSOLVE tool for finding analytic solutions to simple but higher order ODEs. And as ever, we'd encourage you to find out more if you need it by using Help DSOLVE.